thank you everybody for dialing in. Uh, my name is Geordie Adsed. I'm a HSEQ manager for a family owned business called Base Industries. In 2019, we were invited by the Victorian Level Crossing Removal Authority to facilitate a scaffold safety presentation. From there, it has now grown into a national recognised training presentation. To date, we've facilitated this with the Federal Safety Commission, Safe Work Australia, WorkSafe Victoria, uh, and there's a lot of other organisations from the level crossings throughout here in Victoria and also New South Wales. Uh, they include Fulton Hogan, McConnell Dow, Ashiona Coleman Rail, Lango Hawk, the South East Program Alliance, uh, Novo Rail in a joint venture in New South Wales, Icon, Minicon and Barper have made it national mandatory training. Kane Constructions, we're now providing national training and also Capital Group uh, national training. The reason we developed this training with the support from the Level Crossing Removal Authority was because we know there's a problem. You can see three people on the screen there. On the left is one of the business owners, David Adsed. David's been involved with scaffolding for 43 years uh, throughout Australia. And if you speak with David, we've seen very, very good positive improvement around falling objects, falls from heights. We're now working behind handrails, but we're still seeing these scaffolds collapse and cause catastrophic events. Today, I would like to take you through some of the, the training content and also some key points that we identified through the training. With any scaffold, the first opportunity for any safety and development design is development of the scope. In that process, whether that be in a very early tender phase or uh, close to a project kicking off, we really need to ad identify the intended use for the scaffold. We can design scaffolds for multiple users because generally uh, a scaffold needs altering throughout its life cycle. We also can dive into the engineering of different scaffold designs, which include wing load calculations for scaffold with containment sheeting. We can also allow for the adjustments and modifications very early in the design phase where we can really move away from the reactiveness of scaffold alterations, which we currently see today. And we can identify things like support surfaces with the structure and loads. We feel this is our first opportunity for the safety and design element for any scaffold. Planning for the installation. So again, this is the first opportunity to engage with the scaffold suppliers and the installers where we can potentially have a workshop or a meeting with the scaffold supply company and the scaffold users to help the scaffold users identify the risks associated with that scaffold. Now that might be ties, tie positions, working load limits, but this is the first opportunity before we even erect a scaffold on any site to work with the scaffold users and discuss risks associated with the use of scaffold. A really big one, uh, the last dot point on this slide is the structural interface with scaffolds as well. We really feel there is a big risk wherever we have a perimeter access scaffold and any type of false or formwork support scaffolds. So we really want to make sure that the load ratings, the users are aware of what these different scaffold systems should be used for. Then we move on to the installation. We've seen really good improvement around safe work practices. For those of us who know the one metre lift methodology, that allows us to uh, erect a scaffold always working behind a handrail. Uh, exclusion zones are really big. Uh, if you look at the amount of components that go into a scaffold system, uh, exclusion zones are key to make sure we're preventing any injury from a dropped object. And the biggest part of the training and one of the stories we really want to hit home is housekeeping and making safe before leaving a site or a project. So the installation company should be making sure that the scaffolds are clean from any excess gear or equipment also, things like boards and containment sheeting are, are secure over weekends when there's nobody around on site to prevent any uh, objects being blown or flying out of the scaffold in significant wind or weather events. 
the handover, uh, if required by your, your business or the regulatory body, a handover certificate can be used. And 90% of attendees to the central yeah. training uh, mentioned that throughout their careers, when they have been involved in a handover process, they've actually accepted or signed the handover certificate in their office. We really want to move away from this uh, and encourage everybody who's accepting a handover certificate, whether that be by the principal contractor or your own site, we're really promoting the inspection of the scaffold before accepting the handover certificate. And that's a really good opportunity to make sure that scaffolds are erected as per design, loose components are off the scaffold, and you should be confident when accepting a handover certificate, the scaffold is compliant. We move into the safe scaffold use. So there's a real issue in all industries and all disciplines around unauthorised removal of components, which I'll get into on the next slide. But we really want to plan for the safe use of the scaffold, whether that be through an induction or a procedure, but really want to have processes implemented where people are almost inducted into safely using the scaffold. And that's our opportunity to, one, let everybody know it is not okay or safe to alter or remove a scaffold. Give everybody or scaffold users an understanding of work platforms and their limitations. And also to report any loose objects or objects that are seen on the scaffold that weren't there the day before, because that alone is a segue into asking yourself, who removed it? Am I safe? Do I need to have this scaffold inspected? Inspections and checklists. Uh, throughout the training, we physically go and do an inspection on a scaffold in the field. Uh, the, the feedback from this process is I might have been tasked with a conducting a checklist for a scaffold in my role. However, I have no idea what the questions mean. So we physically go through the inspection checklist and help the checklist users understand what the questions mean to the scaffold safety. And if you're unsure and you are tasked with facilitating an inspection, engage a subject matter expert. And that might be a scaffolder or somebody experienced with scaffold design. Identifying and addressing non-compliant scaffolds, 80% of attendees who have worked with scaffolds say have they been involved or witnessed with scaffold tampering throughout their careers. So not in their current projects, but throughout their careers. So this is a real uh, issue, I think, for all key stakeholders involved in any scaffold management process. There was also a common understand or common conception that only a scaffolder could remove the scaffold access tag. Now, we really want to promote that anybody no. who sees an unsafe <laughs> scaffold has the ability to remove a scaffold access tag, follow, isolate the work area, remove the tag, report, make sure everybody's safe and they're not in any further risk from that scaffold. But we want to get it inspected, recertified and re-handed over safe for use. Dismantle and removal, again, we, uh, we want to make sure we're decommissioning scaffolds. We're blocking off areas. We're making sure that scaffold users are aware that it's going to be decommissioned and the activities are going to take place for the removal of the scaffold. That is really a bit of the presentation or the, or the scaffold training in a bit of a nutshell and happy for any questions coming later. So thank you.